worship team, both Tony and Darren aren't well. Father, we ask that you would heal them in the name of Jesus. You know, your word says that by his stripes we are healed. And so on that whipping post that day, when Jesus took all those lashes, 39 lashes, save one for us, it's that act that gives us the right to have healing. And so I, I claim that and I call out on it in the name of Jesus that we would see healing happen for both Mr. Tony and Darren. Um, and then any of our community, Eric and his feet, we want those healed. Um, I'm just asking for healing for all of our community. Um, I thank you for just again, Gethsemane's willingness to allow us to come and hang out here. I thank you for your word that never changes. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that it divides sheep from goats, right from left bone from marrow, smoking and non-smoking, it, it came to divide. Jesus said that he came to abolish the law and institute grace, and he came to set us free. So Father, as we hear from the throne room today, will you just set us straight in this new year? Let us live this year starting off right and for you. Let's change our town. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, there's a few songs out these days that keeps talking about dry bones. Anybody familiar with the dry bones story? Yes. I think that's where we're going to start. Um, I do know that I heard very clearly the Lord say today, let's start the year off right. I said, okay, well, what does that mean? He said, let's start the year off right. And I said, I heard you. I said, what does that mean? And um, he didn't answer me. So when he doesn't answer me, that means that I need to just wait and listen. Because if I wait and listen, if he doesn't, if he hasn't answered me yet, I will wait and listen and then he will tell us. We generally, at least I can speak for myself, go wrong when we try to make up an answer for God and try to run with it. Anybody ever done that besides me? No. I'm saying, okay. God, do you want me to do this? And you go, I need an answer. And you go, oh, I think he said yes. And then uh -huh. off you go. And it does not turn out well. It does not turn out well. In Ezekiel 37, starting in verse 1, this is what it says. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. I'm going to read this in the message. God grabbed me. God's spirit took me up and set me down in the middle of an open plain strewn with bones. He led me around and among them a lot of bones. There were bones all over the plain, dry bones, bleached by the sun. And he said to me, okay, who's me? Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Good job. It was kind of like who's buried in Grant's tomb. Or in Ezekiel. It was Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a prophet. He said to me, son of man, can these bones live? Now we know with God, any and everything is possible. But sometimes you're like, well, no, not on their own. I have a piece of road pizza out in front of my house that's got, it used to be a possum. And um, it's just that. 
it's not bones that are going to come back to life. It's not, it's not going to inflate and start running around in the dark and doing what possums do and scavenging through trash, and eating mice and that kind of stuff. It's just dead. Um, but here God is asking Ezekiel what I would consider, if I were there, a trick question. You with me on that? Son of man, can these bones live? He's in a valley, and it's just dead, dry bones, not skeletons. It doesn't say a skeleton. It says bones. There's bones piled here. There's bones piled here. There's bones, and there's just bones everywhere, and they're white. You know, bones, when they're fresh, are not white. When they have decayed and they've lost the inner meat marrow that's in it, and they have... Um, process through the end of its life, they turn white. They get very brittle and they turn white. So Abba says to him, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, master God, only you know that. I'm here to tell you that's a good answer. If God's asking you a trick question, you just turn that puppy right back around and tell him only you know that. Don't try to pretend like you know more than God. I have done it, I have been there doesn't work out. It never works out in my favor. He's the man with the plan. You with me? So he's in a valley. All these dead bones are everywhere. God asks what seemingly is a trick question. And Ezekiel turns around and says, well, you know the answer to that. So he said to me, God, the creator of the universe, said to me, Ezekiel, prophesy over these bones. So what does prophesy mean? Speak on. To speak on, to speak over, to say what's going to happen. What else? I can't hear you. Talk prophecy. What's to come on them? When you, what does the word prophesy mean? To talk prophecy uh, over something. To, to, to say, here's what's going to happen. Right. When John the Revelator prophesied over the end times that are in the days ahead of us, however long it's going to be before we're there, that was prophecy. Here's what's going to happen. So, the father said to Ezekiel, prophesy over these bones, and then he tells him what to say. He said, tell these bones, dry bones, listen to the message of God. Well, have you ever heard that old saying, you call a spade a spade? Yeah. Well, he nailed it with the dry bones. There's no marrow in them. There's no muscles or any. They're not attached. It's not a skeleton. It's not the leg bones connected to the hip bone. It's none of that. None of that's happening. And it's just a pile of bones. And the father has asked him to prophesy, to speak something over these bones. And the word is, listen to the message of God. How many times have our lives been nothing but a pile of dry bones? Or am I the only one? No, you know, where are you at, Mary? Five and six, or five or four. <coughs> In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth. No, I'm just kidding. So maybe you're not thinking, well, your life's a pile of dry bones. Travis, did you say yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me what that means for you. Just everything completely destroyed. Yeah. Hope, hopelessness, depression. Um, see no way out, really. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like the end of the rope kind of deal. Yeah. Dry bones. Did y'all hear him? Yeah. Hopelessness, depression, no way out. Things all, lost everything. So. I would venture to Mims. Almost like your back's up against the wall. Your back's up against the wall. And with these four guys, they didn't have backs. They just had dry bones everywhere. Wah, wah, wah. I think there's some guy sitting there with you. Um, so, dry bones, if we're going to look at these dry bones and recognize that there have been times, or maybe you're in a season right now, where you are in a dry bone situation in life, 
maybe this new year came into being and last year was terrible. You're not really hopeful for this new year coming up. Because last year didn't end so well. I mean, last year was weird, right? Yeah. 2020 was just weird. All the, all the Corona COVID business and the pandemic and things shut down and masks and I mean, just everything. Everything changed for us. Um, my grandkids have a new normal. They have a very new normal. They can't, they have to sit six feet apart from each other in school. They have to eat at their desk. There's desks six feet apart all around. And when they go outside to play on the playground, they have to stay six feet apart. They can't, you can't jump in a jump rope. You can't, you can't play tag because I can't touch you without being six feet apart. So they've developed a um, shadow tag. <laughs> shadow tag. And so that doesn't work all that well when you're like in first grade or second grade because your shadows are real short. You know, you gotta get really close when your shadows are short. But they're, they have a new normal. I mean, for the, for a season of the year, they did school online and they didn't see any classmates. I mean, we have had in our community a shortage of socialization, right? Yeah. There is no get together and hanging out at the library. There is, for a season here, it was take your sack lunch and leave. We couldn't even talk. For a season, we didn't even have the opportunity to have a word of God. So 2020 wasn't all that fun, but I'm here to tell you we made it. We by far were not in a concentration camp. I'm saying. We by far still had um, most of the freedoms that we have in the United States. I mean, we look at having to wear a mask is not a freedom, but it's a mask. I mean, you know, come on, we can find other things to gripe about. But I have been in life where if somebody just thumped me wrong, I probably would have just fallen into a pile of dust. My life was so dry. My life was so empty. My life was so void of hope, of um, anything good that maybe could come tomorrow. So I can see how when God said, let's start the year new, and he's been dry bones in all week talking about dry bones, dry bones, dry bones. And then it came on a song on the radio, and we were coming over here, and I was like, is that it? Is that it? And so when I looked this up and read it, I, this is the beginning of what he has to tell us. So dry bones, <coughs> those of you that have a, a lessening of hope, those of you that feel as if your life is in despair, those of you that feel like maybe your life isn't as plentiful as it could be, this is the word. Listen to the message of God. You want hope? Open the word. You want an answer? Open the word. You want to seek um, to know him more? Open the word. If you want to know who you are as a child of God, open the word. Listen to the message of God. So God, the master, told the dry bones, watch this. I'm bringing the breath of life to you and you'll come to life. I'll attach the sinews, which is like the tendons and stuff to you. I will put meat on your bones. I will cover you with skin and breathe life into you. You'll come alive and you'll realize that I am God. <coughs> when I was in the lowest of the low, um, a long time ago, I was going to say 14 years ago, but that's it's been longer than that, about 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago. I just wanted to die. There was no more hope. I had, I thought I had lost everything. I thought that things were not going to get better. I couldn't see um, anything on the horizon that had anything of value whatsoever. And I really just wanted to die. And I figured that I was either going to die or I was going to go crawling back into the arms of the one who could save me, and that was Jesus. And when I did... He breathed life back into me. He said, let's live. You don't have to walk around like a zombie, like you're dead. Let's do something about this. 
come crawl in my lap, let me be your dad, you be my kid, and let me breathe life, let me put your life back together, okay? And instead of it just being a bone over here and a bone over here and a bone over there, let's let's make this skeleton whole and then we're gonna put tendons on it, then we're gonna put muscle on it, then we're gonna put skin on top of that, then I'm gonna breathe life into you, and then your life is gonna be restored. And it began with listen to the message of God. Dry bones, listen to the message of God. So God the Master told the dry bones all of this. Watch this. I'm going to do all this, and then what's going to happen? You're going to realize I'm God. I have no explanation for the past 15 years, 20 years of my life except for God. Travis, do you have any other explanation for where you are today other than God? No, completely no. Completely uh, God. Yeah. Yeah. John, what about you? No. <laughs> no, no other explanation no than other. the only way it could have happened was God. Yeah, that's the first, only. They first seek the kingdom of God. Yeah. What about you, Will? Got any answer for the where, where you're at in life for any other reason other than God? Absolutely not. And when we recognize that there's walking testimonies of people who were dry bones, they listened to the word of God, and God put their life back together in him and then breathe life back into them that's pretty cool isn't it Peaceful. it's worth living all of a sudden yeah it's it's way different you know you're not walking around you barely can make your legs walk because you just have no life left back in man i am hopping i hop i hop all the time i am hopping from here to there even when i'm tired i'm hopping when i'm worshiping i'm really hopping and there is it's life that gets put back into you so, I prophesied just as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, this is Ezekiel talking, there was a sound, and oh, a rustling. I mean, I'm a picture, a picture, thousands and thousands of bones laying all over this parking lot. And then Ezekiel obeyed the Lord and said exactly what he was told to, and then all of these bones start rattling. start rattling and start making all this noise everything starts rattling and the rustling and the bones moved and came together bone to bone I kept watching pretty brave I'm just saying I might have been out of there I don't know not really when you get to see God move tell me you can't take your eyes off of it have you ever seen somebody's life transform right there in front of you? I watched a video of a friend of mine's grandson that was born, and they said that he was he was actually a twin, and um, they said there is no hope for him. He was born not breathing. They I guess they worked on him a little bit, but they said there's really let's pay attention to his sister. And um, while his grandfather was videoing, they were in the whatever section it was. I don't think it was Nikki, but whatever it was. And praying. He was a praying grandfather. You know what the little baby did? They'd set him off to the side on one of those little silver tables that they weren't going to have anything else to do with him. And they were taking care of the, uh, the his sister. And um, God breathed life into him. That's... I mean, he's all grown now. That was 20 plus years ago. But when God breathes life into you, things change. Things change in here. Things change in here. Things change around you. And then the world around you begins to change. So. So I kept watching and sinews formed and the, then muscles on the bones, then skin stretched over them, but they had no breath in them. I'm thinking, what was that show with the walking zombies? There you go, that was close, close, wasn't it? 
That's, that's all I can picture, okay? They were bodies with skin on them, but there was no breath in their lungs. So he, God, said to me, Ezekiel, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, tell the breath. God the Master says, come from the four winds, come breath, breathe on these slain bodies, and breathe life. Why would you go this far and not continue? Yes. Do you say slain? Bodies? Slain. Murdered, killed bodies. Not murdered, but do we know what, what, or what battle it was? Or? It was just called the Valley of Dry Bones. That's where they dumped the bones. It was like, um, like a graveyard, yeah. Yeah, like a graveyard. It was just where they dumped bones from wherever. And it was called the Valley of Dry Bones. Um, so, why would we go so far to bother to get our bones put back together and sinews, or tendons, and muscles, and skin, and not go the extra mile to have life breathe back into us? I did it. I said, I can, I can do it. I got somewhat pulled out of my mess, like 25 years ago, somewhat pulled out of my mess and, and said, I'm okay, I, I got this. And then I went right back to my addictions and I went right back to, so I had skin and, and tendons and muscles on my bones, but I had no breath. You know, the word tells us that that it's the life. When God scooped up the dirt, we weren't anything more than dirt. But when he scooped up the dirt and then breathed life into us, you're just walking zombies until they got breath in them. You, you do not have to just exist. Anybody ever feel like they're just existing? And then you wake up the next day and you go, oh man, I woke up again. That's not what we're called to do. We're not called to just exist. So you can't get part of the way into it and then just tell God you're okay with that. Let's go all the way with the Father and see what he has to do for us. So I prophesied just as he commanded me. The breath entered them and they came alive. Let's just picture that. Valley of bones, not in any form or fashion. Now they're in skeletal form and they got tendons and muscles and skin on them. And now, because of what the Father has told Ezekiel to do now, they have entered life into them. And they came back to life. All these bones. We don't know where they came from. We don't know who they were. We don't know how old they were. It doesn't matter. It doesn't say. That's got to be trippy, though. But tell me, some of you guys, when you ran into your old folks from way back, and they go, wow, you look completely different. <laughs> yeah, gain some weight, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, and you gain some weight. Gain some yeah. weight. <laughs> Imagine what happens when you don't do drugs. Yeah. Um, but you see and engage into somebody else, and they're like, you got, you got life in your eyes. Yeah. Because before you didn't. So much more peaceful. So much more and, peaceful. Yeah, stressful like, living like that. That other way is way stressful yeah. to live. Yeah. And there's, you know, Jesus said he came to give us a peace that passes all understanding. Yeah. So, he breathed, he prophesied, commanded, they breathed, uh, the breath entered them and they came alive and they stood up on their feet, a huge army. Then God said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Listen to what they're saying. And here's what they were saying. Our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. There is nothing left of us. Was there. My hope is gone. There's nothing left of my life. I, I might as well be dead. Therefore, prophesy. Tell them God says, the Master says, I'll dig up your graves and bring you out alive, O oh, my people. Then I'll take you straight to the land of Israel. When I dig up graves and bring you out as my people, you'll realize that I am God. I'll breathe my life into you and you'll live. Then I'll lead you straight back to your land, and you'll realize that I am God. I've said it, and I'll do it. It's God's decree. I think he wants us to come back to life, guys. He wants us to come back to life. He wants us to stop living as dead people and come back to life. The hope that is promised to us, the peace that's promised to us, 
the life that lives within us when we're, when we're his kid, the walk that we have, the freedom that we have in Christ, and then we recognize that he's God. I'm telling you, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for God. <coughs> you wouldn't be here if it weren't for God. You wouldn't be here if it weren't for God. No. Jerry wouldn't be here if it weren't for God. Will wouldn't be here if it weren't for God. Evelyn wouldn't be here if it weren't for God. Greg, you wouldn't be here if it weren't for God. We got a lot of this, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for God. Now what we need to do is start proclaiming it. So this is how I think the Lord's telling us to start this new year off. In Matthew 6, it's time to come back to life. And Matthew 6 is how we're going to do it. And I'm just going to read one, one word today out of it. Well, two scriptures because it's all one sentence. But we're gonna we're gonna camp in Matthew for the next few weeks. Just think about this with me. Jesus, who was God, left the throne room, came to be born like all the rest of us were born and grew up as a human. I mean, he had to be potty trained and all of that business and lived as a human and then was anointed by the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Jordan River by John, anointed by the Holy Spirit, favored by the Father, began his ministry in complete obedience to the Father. And then these are the first words that he said in his first sermon. Let's think about that take that back even further before anything was ever made before light and darkness were separated before land and water were separated before human human humanity was was created and animals and birds and flowers and trees and all that stuff was made jesus knew that he had something to say to mankind and this was his first message think it's got any importance in it six thousand years he has been waiting to get to here to say these things to us. That's why I think the Lord wants us to be there. So, Matthew 6, 22 says this. The eye is the lamp of the body. Oh, we're both. those are both bodies. Valley of dry bones. God's breathed life back into us. We're now a functioning person. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? I think we're supposed to start this year off right with our eye being single, listening to the message of God, with life breathed back into our body, and being a kid instead of an orphan. Remember, he died on the cross to make us his kid, not because we sinned. That was a bonus. Anybody ever heard me say that before? It was a bonus. I is single on the Father so that light comes out of us because he's brought us back to life, because he breathed life into us. You're dead in your, trespass, in your trespasses until you get born again. You're just dead. You may be alive in a body, but you are, for all practical purposes, dead. And then you get to come back to life. Y'all two, sit down. You're disturbing my message. You're disturbing his message. You'll have to leave if you're going to do that. Tell you what, the Lord is going to kick butt this year. Watch. You had to watch. He's going to take folks and radically transform them only if you let him. Aren't y'all ready to see our community changed? Aren't you ready for your life to be changed? Are you ready for your life to be changed? Then your campmates' life to be changed? Then your community to change? Our church, us, we should be going out a few times a week and laying hands on the sick and people dropping their crutches and getting up and walking. It's time for that. Our eye needs to be single. It needs to be the light from our life because he breathed life back into us. 
It's time to stop being baby Christians. We've been talking about that on Wednesday. It's time to get into the meat of the word, and God wants us to start this year off right. He wants to breathe life back into us, and he wants us to function as the body of Christ the way we're called to. Does anybody else want to do it besides me? I'm saying, let's go. It's time. It's time. It's time for our eye to be single, the light to come out of us because he's breathed life into us and he has restored to us the things that we lost. And nobody made me do drugs. It was all my choice. I ruined my own life. But God in his loving grace restored it to me. Did I deserve it? No. Did he love me anyways? Yes. I really desire that you guys come along. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for us to be eating serious steak this year. It's time. Yes or no? Yes. 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 Let's go. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the message. I thank you for bringing dry bones back to life. I thank you for breathing life back into us. I thank you for um, calling our attention to allowing us to have the opportunity to have our eye be single. Let our eye be single on you. Let us to see only you, to hear your message, to listen to your word, to get into the word, to know you, to know you, to know you, to know you. Because if it weren't for you, we'd all be dead. Um, we are humbled to be called your kids. Thank you for grace and mercy. We thank you for forgiveness and unconditional love and freedom and sobriety and just the the ability to say your name, Jesus. Because if it weren't for you, Jesus, life wouldn't be worth living. Um, thank you for restoring to us our sonship and our daughtership and helping us to no longer be orphans. Um, Holy Spirit, I'm I'm asking for me. And for all of us that are here today, that you get our attention, our our individual attention, at no matter what the cost. I ask that you hunt us down so that we can see and keep our eyes on you. Because I'm ready to be a force to be reckoned with. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. We honor you. We adore you. We worship you. We are humbled. I pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay.